Okay. <clears throat> so hopefully you've spent, you know, close to 45 minutes or so just really getting into the physicality and the interaction of all the different materials, the pencils, the erasers, the charcoals. And remember, what you're going to end up with is going to look very abstract. But at the same time, you should be looking at something that actually is, <clears throat> could conceivably look like a, an abstract drawing, um, you know, obviously non-objective, um, doesn't make any sense for the most part. It probably looks very messy to you. Um, but at the same time, you'll notice that you're getting a lot of different variables in terms of depth because of the way you've kind of manipulated the line and the contrast with darker and lighter values and manipulated your erasers. <clears throat> so one of, one of the, 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 the thing for the next step after this, for the next drawing you're going to do, is I want you to notice that all of the mark making that I made on the sheet is kind of contained within the edges of the picture plane, okay? And we're gonna re refer now to our sheet of drawing paper as the picture plane. And everything that occurs within the picture plane is the image of the drawing itself. And what I want you to notice is, is that I didn't break the edge of the picture plane. None of the edges of my sheet of newsprint are broken, okay? When I do break the edge of the picture plane, what that's gonna ha what's gonna happen is, is that's gonna open up the pictorial space. And it's not gonna, things aren't gonna feel like they're as contained as much. So the next drawing you're gonna do, just put the first drawing that you did aside. The next drawing you're gonna do, you're gonna wanna make sure that you break the edges of the picture plane. And this time what I want you to try to do is really start thinking about making like a composition, which is gonna be all the different aspects and arrangement of everything that occurs within the picture plane. Okay, so again, you can see down here, I'm breaking the edge there. Um, I'm breaking the edge over here. I'm breaking the edge on the top right here. I broke it here, I broke it here, I broke it here. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna make the drawing when you're done with it more whole, okay? So again, you don't, it doesn't have to be representational, but just start thinking about making some sort of structure and basically <clears throat> really thinking about using line and volume and weight of tone um, and just kind of, you don't have to, you can just kind of be intuitive and you don't have to do, necessarily have to know exactly what you're doing, but just again, make sure that you break the edges of your sheet of paper. And you'll see when you're done with it, that unlike that first kind of, and remember, the first piece you were doing was just, all you were doing was experimenting with materials. You weren't trying to make a drawing. But now what you're trying to do is you are actually now trying to think about making a composition where you're arranging all the structure and you're trying to create areas of different types of depth um, throughout the whole drawing, okay? And like I said, there's no right or wrong to what you do. Um, but just again, you, you, just like you did with the first experiment on that first sheet, just really play up what's happening with tonal variations and tonal structure and try to try to play around with different ways of manipulating how you're laying down volume and volume in terms of, uh, you know, with your charcoal and your pencils and your erasers. Okay. So now I'm going from edge to edge, and again, when I go edge to edge, what's happening is, is I'm, I'm using the edges of my sheet of newsprint, and that's, op that's actually forming more of a composition, and it seems like um, it's going to seem more like a, a picture, even though it might end up being abstract. And again, if you want to do something that's like a little bit more representational, like a landscape or whatever, that's totally up to you. They're just, I just wanna be very adamant about the fact that there's no right or wrong to what you do. I just want you to, again, really think about just breaking this edge of the picture plane. And, and you'll notice when, you, <clears throat> when you're done with it, that again, it will, it'll, it'll end up looking like a drawing. I'm using really, really old newsprint. That's why my newsprint is ripping. Um, yours, you shouldn't do that, even if even if you do end up using um, 
some pressure. Okay, so again, try to really think about being up, you know, being subtractive with your erasers. And just play around with it, see what happens. Again, spend about 45 minutes or so, um, and then just see where you end up. And, it, I, and I would think inevitably, whatever results you end up with are gonna be interesting for you. Um, so also, one other thing, some of you have a chamois, which is that cloth, and some of you weren't able to get one. If you wanna use something equivalent to, to a chamois, go get some tissue paper and try using tissue paper to blend areas because it's very, very soft, and you'll get very, very soft um, areas in terms of blending. And just know that you can always use your hand to blend and then just wash your hands with soap and water when you're done.